<laughs> so now be a good time to do my introduction because I started early. So welcome to Travel the Mat and we're building memories together and today I'm in Covent Garden by day not by night and um, yeah I'm going to go calm down I think I do Leicester Square. I'm on my way to Highbury because I've got an event there today so I thought I'd stop off in London and do some filming. So as I said yeah I'll see you after the intro. Jimmy Market. So here at Corn Garden, and I'm going to. I've got an evening version, but I'm doing a a night, a day version, night, a day version. So we just showed you Jimmy Market, which is this is the front end, and I'm going to show you the different parts of the I need to go run to the church when that's up as well. But everyone's getting ready for the coronation in just over a week now. The 6th of May today is the 29th, I think. Remember it correctly. No, it's the 30th line. And here is the London Transport Museum. So, you know, wonder over there. I realise I've done an intro yet, but I'll do that later. That's the London Transport Museum. And I'll put up costumes. Again, it's about big dinner. And let me just show you this, guys, because when I was in my, my teens, I used to um, party here. And down there, it says Dirty Martins. This is where that lady's standing. You see that? You've got the. That was his Dirty Martins downstairs, used to be a club or a bar. And it used to play RB music back in the day. The first historical records of Covent Garden dates back to the 1200s, when the Royal Covent Garden was just enough in Fields and was owned by Westminster Abbey. Where the building and the pizza now stand, it was referred to as the Garden of Abbey and Covent. During the first hundred years or so of Covent Garden's ex existence, there was a place primarily called the Playhouse. With the letters of patent given by Charles II, as you all know, one of my favorite kings, he granted Covent Garden and a theatre royal, Drury Lane, exclusive rights to present spoken drama in London. It is believed that the oldest house in Covent Garden is 43 King Street, which is a serving building just near Covent Garden and serves architects. So who's buried at St Paul's Church in Covent Garden? We have people like Sir Charlie Chaplin and Owen Coward, and also Grace Field. Now it's changed to Shack, Shack Attack. And look guys, there's the map. To get upper levels, you've got a ground level, and then a lower level, which is just show you. So, down here is Punch and Judy's, another little hangout for me. And I'll show you, I'll tell you why the significance of this pub and the Punch and Judy's actual puppet show and what the link is and why, why it's so famous. But I want to take you to the location first, which is just over here where the church is. To the pigeon. These are pigeons ain't gonna fair these days, you know that. So Yeah, it looks like there's a show on but I'll get some uh, space so I can show you. You see what they're saying St. Paul's. We're just over there. 
was the first place where they've done a Punch and Judy show. The earliest script of a Punch and Judy show dates from 1827 when the journalist John Payne Collier visited Pixenai, the 82-year-old Italian punchman who had worked in London since he arrived in 1779. Collier was to record the script at a special performance, while the artist George Cruikshank drew each scene. I'm assuming to him as well. Yeah. All these guys here, right, who perform here, have to go and get a license. And um, I'm talking years ago to a guy here who worked here, and they had to apply for license, and they just renew, I think, every year. It was three years or whatever it is, but I don't know what it's like now, but I know they uh, got to get licensed and perform here and they've got to go rigorous, 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 rigorous um, training and uh, obviously health and safety because they're in the public road. But let me show you this guys, it used to be a sweet shop. Is that look home? So this is the other end of Bunch of Judas. I was standing over that side. See, that's the upper level. Oh, the church is open, so I'm going to show you that. Let's get into the church. First of all, I've seen this as well. It's normally closed, so I'm going to feel well. So that church is normally open, but it's closed for further notice. And this is a grave site for um, plague victims. And um, years ago, we, we did a dance battle. I'm going to go on the other side as well. Dance battle with these Fogas here, and we won. So, yeah, this is the other side of the church, which is clearly shut. So, here's a bit of info about St. Paul's. Famous church was designed by Indigo Jones. Uh, he stood on the glory of God and services to his people since 1633. So it's been a place of work since 1633. No dogs, no music, no alcohol, no traders. Yeah, there you go. Which is shut. So we're going to go through the upper market now. So this is the North Hall. And that used to be Jamie Oliver's. And you got Dolce and Gabbana. As you can see by the lovely glasses. So here are some of the traders you got. Again, these are all handmade as well. Jewelry. Obviously this isn't handmade. So, what I'm going to do is cut through the middle and I want to show you the other side of Punch and Judy's, which is another entrance. And I was just thinking, you know, since Covid, it's like it's never happened, more or less. 
you see the sanitizer everywhere, but um, some people wear masks. Well, it's a nice ice cream shop. Good cashmere. Mmm, the smells, oh my gosh. Too bad you guys ain't got smell of vision. I guess you can see that coming up now, can't you? That sign above. That's the Punching Genie sign, guys. So, yeah, so this Punching Genie's up there. And this is where I stood on the other side of. Uh, I said, you remember I said that this used to be a sweet shop? That was that there. Yes, ma. So this is the other half of Covent Garden. So you go to Apple Store from here. So it's Apple Store just there. And what I'm going to do is go past Apple Store and chuck a left and go up to Covent Garden Station. So let me show you this. The iconic train boxes for London. Covent Garden Markets. Well, that's what you were thinking. Just give some update and how old and uh, what Covent Garden was about before and how you all come about. The area was fields until briefly settled in the 7th century when it became the heart of the Anglo-Saxon trading town of Londonwick, then abandoned at the end of the 9th century after which it returned to fields. By 1200 part of it had been walled off by the abbot of Westminster Abbey for use as arable land and orchards, later referred to as the Garden of the Abbey and Convent, and later the Convent Garden. Following the dissolution of the monasteries it was granted in 1552 by the young King Edward VI to John Russell, 1st Earl of Bedford, c. 1485-1555, the trusted advisor to his father King Henry VIII, the 4th Earl commissioned Inigo Jones to build some fine houses to attract wealthy tenants. Jones designed the Italianate arcaded square along with the Church of St. Paul's. The design of the square was new to London and had a significant influence on modern town planning, acting as the prototype for new estates as London grew. By 1654 a small open-air fruit and vegetable market had developed on the south side of the fashionable square. Gradually both the market and the surrounding area fell into disrepute, as taverns, theatres, coffee houses and brothels opened up. By the 18th century it had become notorious for its abundance of brothels. An act of parliament was drawn up to control the area, and Charles Fowler's neoclassical building was erected in 1832 to cover and help organise the market. T. Look, look, someone doing fashion. Makes you look lovely. Yeah, bloody. <laughs> so she looks lovely. Bless her. Bless her. She'll... You gotta be. You gotta have tough skin to be a model and stand in the middle of this with everybody watching you. I like this. Look at this, guys. <laughs> so I'm on the back end of Granite Hills, Common Garden Station, and I just came across this dinosaur. I went in World Opera House and you're not that film, which is what makes sense. You got buddy Transformers. If anyone's fans of Only Fools and Horses, you'll sure recognise the name. 
the Nags Head. And no, it's not the original place where they filmed it, but it's the same name. And then um, we got another pub across the way. And this pub has been there for years. So when I was going in the night, actually 1990s, this was there. Because there was just up there on the left is the station. And on the left there with that guy standing with a hat, used to be Tarak, and I used to work in there. So let's chuck a left. This is Floral Street. I like how they painted all the frigging um, holes bright red. Right, let me tell you a story about this. See these? These are actually old cannons, and that's actually the cannonball inside. So you've got the old ships, you know, you've got like, um, back in the 17th century, you've got the big cannons. That would have been some of the um, cannonballs and the cannons. So you've got Ted Baker, that's new. might chuck around that lovely court because no, let's give that a miss right, actually, let's go down here because I want to show you something and see if it should be still there Pineapple Studio, it's back in the day I used to when I was a dancer back in the days <laughs> oh, this is way before my kids were born um, I used to be a dancer and I used to come up here and go to Pineapple Studios and do contemporary dance. Yeah. Used to do contemporary dance and also used to do um, urban, so hip hop. And um, it's just up here. And um, it's so nostalgia coming down here. You see, it's still there. I think it is. Yeah, it is, because I know there was someone, a friend of mine filmed here the other day. So let me see. Yeah, there it is. Oh, my day, it just goes back. <laughs> oh, gosh. When I used to perform here. <laughs> so, when I was 17, this is where I used to dance. Madonna's filmed here. Um, I think she actually did her. Look, see the dark cuts here. So I won't film them because that's the famous Pineapple Studios. Madonna did her video here. I think it's Madonna. I'll show it's Madonna. Madonna or Jerry Hall. But. Oh my days. So, this is a famous pineapple dance studio and I used to dance here in the 90s I'll show you the sign yeah we go I mean I was like 19 17 18 19 when I used to come here and it was like 1990s but oh my day a bit of nostalgia there. Gosh, ain't changed a bit. You can get a picture of me in it. So my grandkids see it. Look, grandpa used to be a pineapple dance studio. And I'm back here. Yeah, oh my days. It's so cool to be here. Anyway, we've got a pool. Studio shop. I don't know what that is. Traffords World of Common Garden. I'm not sure what that is. I'm not getting in, but I'm going to show you that, guys. And um, you can see the old um, pulleys that it used to be a warehouses. So, gosh, this is like memory lane. Oh, Victorian building there. Got Victorian and Georgian. I'll show you this, right? I always used to tell my kids when you come to. London, always look up, look above the shops because look at the architecture of the different houses, the buildings, they are not the same. And again, this would have been due to bombing, just 
due to stuff really so um yeah and if i show you this here as well architecture is so different and that's what makes london so unique i know because the history of london goes back so far it's got it's been built and built and built and built because remember Londinium, how it used to be called, and then you got the Romans come in, and then the wall around just the mile of London. So if you look at that building there, it's how to come in person and one next to it. And you got a bit of a modern, I mean, modern building. So, so I'm walking in the sun. I could have crossed the road, but I'm walking in the sun. And um, we're walking out to Leicester Square. And um, I'm going to show you a bit of Leicester Square and show you what and how Leicester Square has changed in the days of Minder. We're talking about 1970s, 80s. And this is where you've got these. Uh, they're everywhere. And these days they don't pedal, they've got bikes, moped things, an engine, that's what I'm trying to get to. So across the way you've got Stringfellows, which is a very 80s place to go. And the guy who's owning it, or probably still does, Peter Stringfellows, I think he's passed away now actually. Um, but yeah, so we straight down, you've got Trafalgar Square, but I'm not going that way. And, and turn right. So we've got Browns just over there, which is a wish I believe. So that's an old coward. And we've got a great British Bake Off musical, interesting. The Screen King's Pub, which is called the Salisbury. Yeah. And this is the way we're going to turn down. And we've got Les Mis. This is the kind of theatre part of uh, Covent. It's a good round table. which is Green King's Pub. This is St. Martin's Court, by the way. So over there we said Barclays, right? That used to be Capital Radio. Now it's ran on uh, in Leicester Square. So this part here, formal wear, lips in and sun, I see him suit from. That's on Sewer Court, we're going to pass down it quickly, briefly, and then go to Little Square. So in 1910, the Nostic Company was based here. And you got Watkins Books. Where do I get my spiritual books from? I'm not going to go straight down there because there's antiques and so on down there, but I'm going to Leicester Square, which is just up here. And I'm going to go nick down one of the back alleys. That's a new doggy. Street burger. Here he is. The two bar on the left. We've got people coming out for the night already. So there's your view. And I'm in the heart of Leicester Square now, look. 
You can see the building's just been really cleaned in its all its glory. There's Trocadero Casino. And just down there, which is Casino. It used to be a nightclub. We used to come here back in the day. Really busy down this way. You got the Odeon on the left. Oh, yeah, yeah. Now it's gone. Over there, that white building over there. They used to be covered with radio. No, it's of DJ Fridays. Oh, it's like, it changes so much, I tell you. Everyone's really merry. <laughs> and everyone's at the park, sitting down. We used to call them dead bodies because they just lay there. The kids are out having fun. Walk fighting's on. The pigeons are loving it. And it looks really majestic again. I'm going to go in the front. Reminds me of Note when I was in France. Well, someone's having a birthday. There you go. Oh, this is with the chase there. He's something. And there you go. Think he's a leaf around, I'm telling you now. So, um, let's we walk through the Odeon. And there's the Empire. That empire, we came here and it had the prince in concert. We went there, it wasn't even bloody prince, it was some guy who's meant to look like him. And he didn't even do a good job doing what they didn't like him. He didn't even sing either. Um, so, yeah, I don't want to tell me about it. McDonald's having their own, they're having their stint of being everywhere and everywhere. So she just comes in front of me like a crack. Swiss girls, they used to be on there, but they've moved them to here. It's causing so much congestion. I know it's finished. So, I want to show you this. If anyone remembers mind with Dennis Waterman and George Cole, this bit is in the, uh, the closing sequence where they're holding up the, what's called the um, telephone glass pole. And that Odeon is still there, but that was in the uh, other, I had the finishing credits as well. To show in I don't get why people say like cannons in smile because you're kind of smiling in your picture, aren't you? These cannons mean that technically you should smile anyway. I'm, I'm just moaning, ignore me. Um, so, yeah, I'm getting back crowd. <laughs> um, 
the Chucky Dero. And that's a new West Complete, I believe. As you can see behind me, so much to do here, I tell you. I think I've done, I've done my steps today, I'll tell you that for free. Over there is the National Theatre. No, National Gallery, sorry. <coughs> Got Bonnie and Clyde at the Garrett Theatre. And that way it leads to Barbara Square. So, I want to say a big thank you to you guys for coming on my walk with me today. And um, we're done. It was been really interesting. Nice to see and reminisce. And um, yeah, see, see you on my next video. And um, look after yourself. God bless.